Hi there. So it's that time of week again to flex our art muscles. Let's grab our sketchbooks and get right into it. I'm Danny, and this is Draw With Me. So today I thought we would just revisit the character that we were drawing last week, um, Liza. As I mentioned before, I kind of figure out, figured out most of, honestly, everything about this character except for her color scheme. So I thought this was a good opportunity to sit back and maybe uh, work out what she's going to look like in terms of what colors she has. Um, I also thought maybe at the same time it might be a good opportunity to do a furry color challenge. Um, I tend to like to work with a limited palette because if you throw too much it's just overwhelming visually and while well, you're trying to create it. So I think it's a good opportunity to do that. As I said, I don't really have any colors worked out for her as of yet. I think the only thing that I had really decided on was that she was going to have brown hair. Um, and again, that was mostly because of the inspiration from Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle and um, Aerith. So we might keep that. I'll probably start with doing it brown and then if I don't like it or I, for whatever reason it doesn't work with the other colors, then we'll change it out. But I think that's where we'll start. So uh, yeah, we'll start with just doing a color pick. Now I usually use my Oh, who's? Um, I have like a couple of packs of those guys, and then I have a good an amount of Copics that I use as well. But uh, I honestly lean towards more my Oh, who's? I don't know why. I just recently have been preferring them, so that's what I've been using. So, so far, we've got um, mahogany, lavender, and we're gonna need one more color. So now I'm gonna actually start to swatch them together on the page so I can make an informed decision about my last color. Also I have this little sketchbook protector sheet. I think it just it came with my Ohu uh, pastel set which is great because this is not hard for paper so it goes right through um, and it doesn't tend to bleed too too much onto the other side but it's better to just protect it just in case. And I usually use a spare scrap piece of paper, but this is a lot better. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a little bit of swatching. I think maybe we'll just swatch over here in this corner because that is the sketch that I don't like. And yeah, so this is just what we did last week. I think I'm probably going to, I know I'm going to color this one for sure. And I'm debating between these two. I kind of like to stagger it out throughout my pages so there's like a bit of color on each page. But I really, really like this one, <laughs> and I want to color it. She's so cute. Ugh, but then I also don't want to ruin the sketch, so maybe I will do that one. But we're going to start with this one inside profile, because she's got the full outfit, and that's kind of what we're trying to design. All right, so what do we say? We said... Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, mahogany. There it goes. There's our mahogany. And we want lavender, which is going to be in this one. Do, do, do. There it is. Lavender. Okay, and we haven't chosen our third color yet. So we'll do that after we swatch these ones. So, swatch time. I love swatching like one of my favorite activities, I don't know why I find it so cathartic. So let's see, okay. So this is going to be the hair color, mahogany, that's really dark. You might want to start with something like a little lighter. I think probably what's happened is like my swatch has faded over time, which gives you a good indication of where it's going to end up, but might be a bit dark to start with. So. We're doing a three color challenge, not a three marker challenge, which means luckily I can use different tones of this type of brown as long as it's within this kind of color family, then we should be good. So if I have a lighter version of this type of brown, then I'll start with that and then we'll use this over top to kind of create more depth. 
Um, same with the purple, obviously. So, so far, choices are brown and purple. Fun colors. So this is how our purple looks next to it. That is also really dark. So those are totally very, very similar, which means they should be separated. Now we are probably gonna leave this blouse white, so that should be okay. Um, and then the boots would likely be brown down here, because I kind of like to put color, I like to balance it out. So I think we're probably gonna have to do like a light, um, probably something from our pastel set to uh, get our third color. So let's do that. So yeah, let's do these guys together and see which one we like better. So this is it with horror, the yellow green, yellowish green. I like it. It's giving me a little bit of Barney vibes, but I like it. I think if I had paint for that, that would give me Barney vibes. Okay, and then maybe, and so what I'm gonna do also, because I like to kind of group them together, I've got my purple in the middle there, but I'm gonna do another little brown swatch underneath so that I can put the blue next to it and see how it works as a group. And here's the blue, okay. Doo -doo -doo. Hmm. Let's try with the blue first. I think we're gonna try with that first because I think that's a little more on par with what would be kind of more common during that time. So we'll put our green away for now. And we still got a little flowers there, so maybe we'll do the flowers, just add that spice of green. And we're gonna line it up. And off we go to the races. So I hate inking. I don't know if y'all have seen Chasing Amy, the Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> There's a really funny part of that movie where um, Jason Lee's character, Brody, is like, he's uh, the anchor for Ben Affleck's um, comic book artist. And everyone's always like giving him flack, like, oh, like, you're not a real artist, yada, yada, yada. Because all he does is trace, right? That's what people perceive. So, oh, you just trace, yada. That's not real art. But coming from somebody that actually does all the drawings, I freaking hate inking. I don't know what it is. I just don't like it. I never have. And yeah, so I like would love somebody to do all the inking for me. That would be great. It would make me so happy to not have to do any of this. So long story short, Brody is a real artist. All right, so I've got her facey face, nose, and yeah, she's like a little sad looking. In this drawing for whatever reason i'm not really sure why i think i established she was having a tough day selling her flowers and where's the hair okay her hair and sorry if i've tilted this at all again i'm not used to it <laughs> I'm gonna move this little guy. I have something here. I'm gonna just move him because he's in the way. Okay. Just cut over hair. Braid. Um. All right. So we got our little band. Do do. Okay. Piece of hair. And that little piece of hair. And we'll add some little defining buddies there. Sleep time. Boop. Boop. One sleeve. Mm 
This has a very small boot on the sleeve. Just a little one. There we go. And I believe I originally did like a little button fasten on that. I don't think I drew it in. Anyways. I like to section it off as I ink, because I hate inking, as I said. Um, Alright, so you can't really see her collar in this one, because it's all side profile, so I'll just add in her little stripey stripes. The bottom of her bodice. Point. And then it goes into another little point. Hello. If you ever wonder why my hands look like shit, it's because I always leave them like this until I ink, and then I say, ah, screw it, and then I just ink them and think I can wing it. And I can't wing it. I can't. I can never wing it. skirt. Ugh, I don't know, I'm nervous to ink the skirt because I'm like, I'm gonna screw it up or something, but whatever. Boop. Boop, help me concentrate. Okay. It's not going terribly. We can do this. Uh -huh. There. This part here, because she is raising that one leg. And it goes all the way. Okay. I'm gonna fix that mistake right away because it's super gonna bug me. I'm not gonna be able to move on. So. Let's do that real quick. I'll add in all of the little details of her skirt so it's quite full. I'm going to try and be pretty light handed because if I'm not, I'm definitely going to mess it up. Alright, skirt. Haphazardly inked. And her shoes. Some of these guys underneath because it does have a little bit of something going on underneath there. That. Shoe going. I usually also leave my shoes to the last minute, but luckily. I didn't do that this time. Yay, past Danny. Okay, so, um, oh, actually do gotta do that hand or it's going to be disasters. Oh, I'm just gonna grab my pencil really quick. Kind of sketch in a little bit. <laughs> I'm not overly concerned with it looking like a really good hand, to be honest, so that's where we're at. I'm just going to ink that in real quick. And that. And this guy over here. I like that. Sure, that works for me. A little bit of a thaw there. And then that. Okay. Got her hand. I think she's kind of supposed to be putting her hand on a like a stall top or something. So imagine a counter there. And there we go. You can't see her other arm. So I guess I'm just gonna start in on doing the colors. So we'll do our blushy areas first. So we'll do sardonyx here. 
and bring that down to where the blushy blushy areas would be. And who I I didn't test this. I really hope these uh these inking thumbs don't smudge a lot. I will be very upset if they do. Okay, a little bit on the bottom left, a little bit on the chin. There we go. And then we'll put our eggshell over top and blend it out. And pray that these markers do not, or not these markers, these inking pens don't bleed like a mofo. I have a bad feeling about them. I don't know why. I'm going to be very sad if they. <gasps> I don't know if there's something on my tip. Maybe there is. I don't want to blame these mark these uh, inking pens. They did say they were supposed to be. Good. There might have just been something on my tip of the eggshell. Ugh, that's super disappointing though. It really does look like there's something on it. It doesn't transfer on another section. Hmm. Okay. I'm moving on. We're letting it go. Definitely muddied up up there. I'm not happy about that. No, sir. Mm -hmm. On the face of all places. I guess it's a good thing that this is one of our expressions. So we'll do the hair. And uh, as I said, we're starting with just the potato brown for the hair. Um, because I feel like the, the original color, the mahogany, is too dark to put as the uh, starting tone. I like to work up. So that's what we're going to do. Start with this guy, so I feel like it's kind of a uh, comparable color, but just in a lighter shade. Okay, and so I'm not really sure what. Like where I want that purple. I was originally thinking maybe like the bodice, but I'm honestly not entirely sure if I want that much of it to be so dark or if I want that much of it to be so light with the blue. I think I'm probably gonna end up doing it the um, like the dark underneath, like these parts and maybe blue over top. Does that make sense? Maybe, maybe it doesn't. Hmm. All right. So yeah, I don't really know which color, like logically I would think to put like the darker color at the bodice. But I don't really want to do that. <laughs> but maybe I should. Ah, uh, this is okay. Let's actually just try. Um, maybe also I'm on the line. The little corsety thing. So we'll do that real quick. I think I am gonna do. I think I'm gonna do the dark underneath, like the main part, and like the the bodice part. Maybe the light color. Cause I was hoping, yeah. Or maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Change my mind. We're gonna do. Oh, does that even make sense? 
Not really. So yeah, this is gonna have to be the bodice because these parts are part of like the bodicey thing. And I don't want that to be too tonally similar to brown, which I feel like it's definitely gonna be. It needs some separation. So yeah, I guess that's the way we're gonna do it. The outfit design decided for us. If you don't like it, then maybe we'll just change the blue out to something that we like a little better, because I think it's the right choice to put the lighter color next to this hair, since it is going to end up significantly darker than what I've got it set up right now. <coughs> But when you lay it on in a large area, it comes out a lot <laughs> grayer looking than the little swatch that I did over there. Interesting. Okay, so, or maybe it's just like that part because I had more ink in. Just the contrast there made it look grayer for the inclusion of the darker tone and more concentration. And then I'm not really sure what the inside of that little part would be yet. I think I'll do the purple first and then decide on that after. It just doesn't look blue enough up here anymore. I'm gonna add another layer. Hopefully it doesn't make it look more gray. Okay, here we go. Oh, I guess we should, we'll do the boots first and should I do the, I'll, yeah, I'll do the same approach with the boots that I did with the hair, which is just to do the potato brown first, and then the mahogany on top so I can get some highlights in there. That'll work up. Just can't take the color away. Go brown boots. Oh, I actually kind of really like the blue bodice. That turned out better than I expected it in my brain mind. And now it's time for the big part. <clears throat> Daunting, as always. And so yeah, that's just white. I feel like from the front view you'll see it a lot more. I really should have used a thinner line for the uh, like detail on that, but I didn't, and that's my bad. <laughs> And I'm going to try and work in sections. That's kind of how, that's why I like putting these, um, one, why I like putting a lot of like pleats in my skirt because when you're coloring it, you can work in sections and then I find like you just don't get those harsh lines and you can take your time a little bit more than having to rush through so that you don't get any, um, like edge lines, you know? And you're working with alcohol markers if it dries a little bit and then you go next to it because they build on each other you get a little edge line so I'm gonna try and avoid that and I think what I'll end up doing is normally you'd be able to see like her little gem here but you can't see that in that photos or photo in this drawing so I think it would probably be purple to kind of match the skirt but I might also make the inner part purple as well we'll see And I'm still gonna work quick because, yeah. But the pleats I do find very breathing for those edge lines because even if you do get them, it does like kind of make sense anyways because it's following like, the full line of the clothing. And this will help obviously when you're doing when we're doing shading, any kind of inconsistencies will look a little bit better, hopefully. They do try and smooth it out as much as possible. Obviously, there's only so much you can do. And again, as I said earlier, this is not marker paper. So if you are using marker paper, it is going to be a little bit smoother than if you're just using a regular sketchbook pad. It just absorbs the ink better, obviously. That's what it's for, so it makes sense. Oh, hey, there's the white gel pen that I put in. <laughs> The alcohol markers can go over top the white gel pen. I just use the Uniball white gel pen. 
but they do not go down at the exact same pigmentation they do next to it so that's okay i don't really mind too much again sketchbooks so really who cares um so here's the thing i definitely feel like she needs some sort of like purple up here and i know she probably have some on her collar on that thing so i think we are going to do this one as well just to kind of get that idea and bring that purple up but i also am playing around with the idea of maybe having like a little bow or something there I think that might be cute to bring it up a little bit so i'm gonna just go ahead and do that this is where we're at rolling in. Ooh, it just looks brown, but I get the idea. We'll have it kind of over here. We will ink this later, so it just comes. And it does work. Oh, that's cute. I like that. I like her having a little bow thingy majigger up there. And we'll keep that. <laughs> Making the band bigger and bigger. There we go. I like it. Maybe not with that thick of a band, but I like it. Oh, she's really looking cute so far. So we're going to use mahogany. We're going to use bottom boot. Put our sole in. And I left the kind of inside of her bodice for now because I'm not sure what color I want to make that. In terms of like a darker blue or maybe just a purple. So bring that up more because I know I brought it up into the hair, it's gonna be an amulet, but I like that color so I wanna spread it around. Something weird is going on over there. That's okay, we're gonna add, we're just gonna move on past it. Add some sardonic, so I don't really think this is gonna be enough anymore. Add it in. Some of that going right on the nose, on the chin, ears, and bring it up a little bit. I'm still gonna see it underneath there, and I'm gonna end up layering it anyways with. Probably the light prawn, that's what I tend to gravitate towards. It's just a little more visible. And all that is still wet. We're gonna put on some of the light prawn. Just like the blushy areas, so it's just not as harsh. Right? Mm -hmm. And we got some loops of light prawn. Or maybe we could give her like purple lips to match. I could bring the purple up. Yeah, let's do that. I always like doing like funky lip colors, like wearing makeup or whatever. So she gets to have purple lipstick. It's totally, totally normal to have in the Victorian era. All right. I don't know why I just said it on purple lipstick, but I did. That's where we're at. Okay, so we did most of the basic shading on there, so I think we're gonna move on to the hair. And we gotta keep in mind that it is braided, so it is going to be a little more dynamic. In the way that we shade it. shading in kind of like sections, I would say. 
and bang out each section kind of like the same rate at the same time. Yeah, that looks already so much better. I'm gonna have to darken up a little bit more over here because I feel like this area is just way too highlighted comparatively to the rest of her head. So I'm gonna kind of nerf that a little bit. That looks better. And you can definitely see the contrast so much better between the skin and the hair now. So I love that. So we've done that, we've done that. So let's do a little bit of our sleeves. Get some shading in there. So I'm probably gonna have to grab a, I'm just starting by layering the actual same bluish gray that I did use, but I'm uh, definitely gonna have to use like a darker color to build on top with the pastels. They're like light colors in general, not just the Ohu pastel set. It, you can only like you can build it, but you can only build it so much. I find um, with light colors, it's just the way they work. So eventually, you are going to have to reach for that darker tone marker. But it's okay though. I like to just get it started with the same tone. It gives me a little bit of an idea of where I'm going and what I'm supposed to be doing, and then I can define off of that. And it, it just gives more depth to it as well. I find personally. This side or just a tear. That's wet. So we don't have any super super hard, harsh edges. It'll kind of blend into itself a little bit. Just add in some of that tonal difference. We don't want to like take away too much of that when we're blending out. I find that that can definitely happen. And I'm gonna do just another little layer back here. Just pump up the darkness a little bit, push it further back. There we go. And I'll do that again with the hair. Might as well just do that now, since we're up in the region. Souls one more time. I think it should be darker. Yeah. And so this bit is largely gonna be just all that color, really, because it is behind everything. We'll just darken it up. And add our shading over here. Add our toes because we want to keep some of those as highlights in here. Mostly on that shoe tip. And the heel. And so let's do the skirt. So this I feel like is going to layer pretty good with just itself. We'll just start with it. And I'm just gonna start coming in. There we go. Hello! Oh, sorry, sorry. It's a couple of things. That's okay. We'll pretend it's a happy little answer. Should channel Barbara with energy. Be a better place. Great. So we got some definition into our skirt, and I find like I just like at this point going in and putting lines in, and it will build, and you will get like this really great texture that you can see. And I love it. 
Good old alcohol markers, am I right? Okay. Got all of our base, and then the last thing that we were gonna do is a blue, a dark, darker kind of blend of colors. So let's do a lighter purple because I'm afraid that's gonna be like way too dark. So I have one dark enough there, but we're doing that one. Maybe we'll do like a pa the pastel violet mixed with the blue. See how that works. What should we do first? Pastel violet or blue? Pastel violet and the light blue over top. Because yes, sometimes it does matter. Maybe pastel violet on top of the blue. See the difference? That's too purple though, I think. But what if we put the blue back on top? Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the light blue. And then we'll put the purple, which is Pale pastel violet, pastel violet on top. And then, I'm just going to do that over here too. So I really feel like I should have done that. And then the pa the blue, the blue is the top again. Kind of bring it back into the color family of the blue up there. And this is why it's like three colors. You actually get a lot, right? You, it's so much more than what you're initially thinking that you're getting. And I like that so much that I'm probably gonna use that as a little bit of shading in these sleeves to help bring them out a little bit. And then I'm gonna want to put a little bit of that purple shading in on here, but not too much. I don't want to darken it too, too much. Just want to bring it in. All right, so that's that. Then we'll do I'm darken up this purple. Hope that it looks more purple. It's layered with brown. Let's go up. That one. Oh, that does look better though. It does look more purpley. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm gonna grab that all I think aubergine color that I was talking about. Oh, I think I called it amethyst, but it's definitely called aubergine. And we're just gonna do some quick, quick. Um, skirt, like the darkest kind of lines on the skirt. I feel like it's definitely gonna blend a lot, so that's gonna be okay. Okay, yeah, I'll blend some of that out. Work this again. Just. Okay, skirt done, bodice done. I'm gonna put a little bit of this up here though, on like the strings, or the fasteners, I guess, whatever you wanna call them. And maybe we should put that button, like little shirt button, blue. Not that you can see it at all, but hey. We know it's there, it's blue. Okay, put some of this aubergine up here. Let's put a 
and need it. Definitely. some of those areas. Now we're just kind of like having fun with it, just following the lines because the base work is already done. So we're just pretty much adding like texture, shading, and trust, you know, this part, this point in the game. So we'll have that up here, that dark up a bit again, really, really push it to the back. Like here, areas, you know. Okay. And then we'll put a little bit of this umber, or not umber, it's um, chestnut brown. And we're gonna have to do that on the base as well. And that's just gonna be our extra little extra mile of shading. And we don't want to use too much of it, just a little bit in the most necessary, like the deepest areas. And maybe like a strand here or there, right? Just gonna bring it all in. We do anything for definition, but just not. And then I guess the last thing I do on this one would just be a little bit of shading on the white, so I'll use a gray for that, and then just bringing in some of the brown to the face. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of extra shading with um, salmon, not salmon paint. Salmon, so it's the darker version, and then I'll put potato brown on top of it. Yet. Put in some highlights, maybe a little pink up this part with blushes. A little pinker. Alright, shadow. There we go. Okay. 
so yeah, we're probably just gonna do the gray and then put on some highlights, put some white gel pen, and then that one is all done. So that's great. What are we doing? We're doing grays. So we'll probably want from the pastel set. So there is a lot of grays in the pastel set. Well, more grays than normal. Okay, so we're just gonna finish up real quick. And I was planning on doing another one, but I think maybe we'll just call it a day because I think that's taken long enough. <laughs> So we're going to do neutral group two. We're just going to kind of give the shirt a little bit of life. Awesome. And then last step is just a little bit of highlighting. And I didn't end up coloring in the green there, but maybe I will. I like to just kind of go... Just get this going. I think this one's kind of getting low. Maybe have another one that's right next to me, so... Move it on the lip. Maybe to put some on the nose. It's really light on the skirt. We're barely touching it. Clean up the edges. Alright. So, there we have it. That is, I think, I'm really actually happy with the character, like the color design. The, the free color challenge really worked out. <laughs> and it ended up looking really, really cute. So, I don't think I'm gonna really need to do any more different versions right now. I think we're just going to leave it there and call it a day. I hope you had fun drawing along. I hope you did draw along and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!